you deserve love you deserve to take up space and you don't have to minimize yourself to fit into someone else's life you are what god designed you to be hi guys and welcome back to my channel for those of you that are new here my name is b and i create lifestyle beauty and self-development content as i navigate life as a 30 year old do you think you're a people pleaser or have you ever thought about or considered that you may be a people pleaser it's awkward right it's awkward <laughs> so as that's like a large part of my self-development content or things that i'm working on personally um the way i do my channel is i'm just navigating as whatever arc or season of life that i'm in that's the type of content that i'm creating right now we're in our healing self-development arc okay so i've decided to start a series called dear people pleaser in which i'll discuss different things i've learned as an ex people pleaser also trying to unlearn some things still we're not fully out of the bucket just yet but we're working on it okay just to give the nuggets and advice that i come across as i go just a reminder that this isn't professional advice just some things i like to share as someone starting over at 30 for this very reason <laughs> i want to start these type of videos with just a little background and how it relates to me just to give the story give it more character i guess yeah so growing up i was the child that always wanted to make good grades i always wanted to have friends i never wanted to make people upset i wanted to get my stars i wanted to be recognized for my grades and things like that and just go with the flow because i really 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 wanted to be liked by people. I wanted it so bad. I had a rough time growing up bouncing in between different type of environments and trying to adapt to them. And very early on, I found myself seeking approval of people. <laughs> early, early in the game. I found myself constantly adapting to the different environments. And instead of just being myself, I would just observe and adapt to whatever that situation or that environment liked because sometimes being myself was frowned upon or it just depended on who you're around and things like that so early on i just discarded the whole like i'm gonna do me and it very much became like i'm gonna just adapt to whatever this relative or whatever whoever i'm around like like so we don't have any issues as an adult i reflect on these situations and these instances and i realized that it was really just a survival technique like i didn't want to get fussed at i didn't want to like be like pointed out for being different or whatever it may be so i found it easier to just blend in and unfortunately i carried that throughout a lot of my life as i fast forward to my adult life i realized a lot of my relationships and friendships are built on that same type of principle just kind of minimizing myself just to make sure that the person is comfortable and it's just a terrible i would say it's a very terrible characteristic to carry on through life and i'll tell you why we're going to talk about a couple reasons why so yeah, I realized a lot of my relationships and friendships were built on this principle of putting others before me. And I'm honestly really disappointed it took me this long to recognize or realize that this is what was happening, to be honest. <laughs> and to be completely transparent, I feel like I just wanted to be loved, wanted, and needed by people. And in those instances, that was more important than anything I had to say, my opinion, or how I felt. So I wouldn't consider myself a super pushover where I would just do anything, but I almost always put others' needs before myself and that was a huge issue. And that brings us back to the topic of this video. I was failing myself to please others. Don't do that. Don't do that. Learn from me. If you're doing it, don't do that no more. <laughs> It's okay sometimes to give people like their shine and their time, but your life should not be focused solely on pleasing others is all I'm saying. So let's get into more of the conversation. I hope the background was a little bit insightful and maybe you all could probably relate to certain instances of it. If not, that's also okay. So now that I've given you a bit of background on my experience with this topic, let's talk about a couple traits that I reflected on as an ex people pleaser. So the first one is avoidance of conflict. Non-confrontational baddie stand up. I'd rather do anything than have a confrontation baddie stand up. <laughs> I know, I know. So the, basically kind of the definition of this is to go through great lengths to avoid confrontation or conflict, often sacrificing your own needs. And I have notes right here, y'all, because I want to say it right. <laughs> the definition just says self-sacrifice. The definition just says failing myself, right? <laughs> Now, there are tons of reasons that people may want to avoid conflict. I don't think they're all tied to being a people pleaser. But if you're avoiding conflict to stay in the favor of someone, then I think that's an issue. 
I still struggle with conflict to be honest because it's some situations where I'm like that is taking that's gonna take so much energy for me to deal with it I don't want to deal with that I'm definitely a self isolate a self isolation girly that I'm working on like if I don't like the way things are I'm just gonna isolate because I don't know what's going on I don't want to put all that energy into arguing and stuff like that but that's lingering like that's lingering people pleasing tendencies still I feel like sometimes you're too too worried about how people will react when you say things when you should really just express yourself you should express yourself naturally basically but yeah i'm definitely i'm gonna go hide in my corner to y'all figure it out type girl but in some situations you really just can't do that in some situations you have to put your foot down you have to speak your truth and stand your ground and if someone gets offended by it then that's that your opinion is your opinion right sometimes people take advantage of being around or surrounded by people who aren't confrontational or don't like conflict and they run all over them or they manipulate them so in those instances you're getting ran over because you can't stand up stand up <laughs> But yeah, you have to draw the line somewhere. I personally see this a lot in the music and the creator communities. I've seen so many instances where uh, there'll be a creator or a musician or somebody that's close to another person and that person is doing things that they don't agree with. But since they want to stay in their favor, they want to stay in their circle, they don't want them to blackball them or they don't want them to do whatever. They'll just avoid the conflict and let it thrive and live and just still be a part of it and it's a lot of reasons that that's a bad thing but one is like you're kind of sacrificing your morals and the things you stand for your values if someone is doing something that you don't like and you don't want to stand up just because you don't want to lose their favor because at that point you're putting their favor over your values you family yourself because why they favor over your values they're not god right right and then you get in your head and sometimes it feels like this big mountain but it's not always this big mountain. It's just something you simply do not want to do. Simply do not want to do. And suddenly you'll look up and you're in situations that you don't even agree with. Like, how did I get here? And sometimes that could be dangerous. It could be traumatic. It could be bad. Always go with your gut and speak up. I feel like that's a big, that's a big trait of people pleasing. And it's very dangerous depending on who you surround yourself with and how far you let it go. The next point is difficulty saying no. I struggle. I feel like every point I mention, I struggle with so bad. I'm doing a lot better with difficulty saying no. And I wanted to say this one after the last point because I feel like it like flows. It's a good segue into this one. You find it hard to say no to requests or demands from others, even when it's not in your best interest. So the first two are kind of aligned in that way. It's like you just never want to say no. <sighs> this one right here. This one right here. Oh my gosh, girl. Well, all of y'all y'all i used to feel so bad saying no to people and i'll tell you why i felt privileged i felt so privileged that someone would ask me to do something of them or the fact that they needed me in their life or thought to invite me and stuff like that so saying no made me feel ungrateful which is crazy i mean when i think about the logical flow it makes sense but saying no should make you feel ungrateful like you're not indebted to anyone like that but then you have to realize that not everybody you're connected to is rooting for you have your best interest in mind or even care about you at all sometimes you're just convenient and it's very easy to be convenient when you don't give pushback so that's always something to keep in mind i learned it the hard way okay i learned it the hard way so i want to share it with y'all i believe more people are selfish and self-centered than we think yeah just really think about it and on top of that, a lot of people aren't even self-aware enough to know that they're selfish or self-centered. <sighs> right? Okay. So really, we put all our stock into people that aren't even established either. And then in a the result fell in ourselves. That's like a double whammy. Like, <sighs> are you not embarrassed? This is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> but no no shame aside i'm just saying this as me like as i reflected and realized some of the things that i was doing i was like girl why was i doing that i like sabotaged my entire life it feels like now but yeah if you mess around and connect to the right selfish person they love having people that will contribute to their plot or their arc or their story and they'll take you for everything you have they never like some people are so focused on themselves they don't even think about how it affects you at all like, so you really have to keep that in the back of your mind when you are evaluating your relationships and evaluating your habits and looking inward and things like that. Are you that person like to other people? Like how can we fix it in general? So it's not like a finger pointing type moment, but it's like, let's be real type moment. And I'll make a whole different video about this because your girl be going 
through it with people. Can you guess my sign? <laughs> the inability to say no means you're not willing to stand up for yourself, stand your ground, or really set boundaries. <sighs> guess what that is? A F. A failure. You have to retake showing up for yourself 101. I expect to see y'all in class on Monday. Failing. All Fs. The next point or the next trait is seeking external validation or approval. Seeking external validation or approval. And so it means you constantly seek validation and approval from others, basing your self worth on external validation rather than internal measures. This one is pretty self explanatory, but in the nature, or in the current nature of like social media and the internet and everything like this, you can see how this could be extremely dangerous. Growing up and even in my early 20s, I didn't realize, but I spent a lot of time seeking people's approval. And what I mean by that is I wanted people to value me and think I was good enough to be included in their life in their circle, in their plans. So I just wanted everyone to see the best version of me and I wanted to feel like the perfect friend or whatever. I always wanted approval for my family, but as I continued my journey with my career and things like that, I honestly felt more like an outsider as time went by because I was just worried about the wrong things. And this happens a lot when you focus solely on finding a spot in someone else's life and not nurturing and growing your own life like a plant like a plant still can't keep a plant alive but we're working on the life thing though we're working on the life thing though okay <laughs> that plant fake that plant is fake baby it's fake <laughs> i was putting way too much power into people's hand and that's a terrible mindset zero out of ten do not recommend return it to cinder immediately because just think about it you put it into other people's hands i feel like that's typical with like social media and things like that some people get on social media and they get a bunch of hate and they can't handle it their opinions have way more weight than it should like people's opinions like i'm not gonna sit here and be like oh i don't care about people's opinions like mm, i'm a bad bitch and i don't care yeah i care about people's opinions but you have to keep it in check and you have to just ground yourself and remember like what you're focused on and what what you value and what's most important in life is it this random person at school that you really want to be friends with that's actually a really toxic mean person in the first place you probably attracted to them for bad reasons or do you want to just like be like i know i'm the gem i know i'm the truth i know i belong here and if people don't value that i can't do anything about it but create space type thing so yeah hopefully i didn't go too far from a tangent with that one <laughs> The next one is overcommitment. And that means you are overcommitting yourselves, taking on too many task responsibilities, leading to stress and burnout. 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 This could pertain to work, personal goals, relationships, etc. I am currently recovering from extreme burnout. I think it's been about two years. And it's due to overcommitment. And most of it was due to my inability to say no to things. In the fear of letting people down, I had expectations for me. Not even worried about my own expectations for myself, you know? <laughs> I was overcommitting at work, working hours, doing way more work than I was paid for. Overcommitting with friends, trying to be there for everyone so no one gets upset, even when I don't even have the capacity to be there. That's a big one. Overcommitting with my small business, because you know what they say about small business, you stop posting, people forget about you. I was so scared that if I stopped posting and took a break that I really, really needed, people will forget about me. So I was overcommitting there too. It's like, it's almost like you could buy some BB stock and I was scared if I took a break, my stock market would crash. Like girl, it ain't that deep. It's never that deep. You know what happened? I had extreme burnout. I started having health issues because my body was under extreme stress and I still had all the same problems that I had before. So I should have just taken the time to take care of myself. That's why self-care is important and also all of these other things we're talking about in this video. So yes, I felt myself by having this mindset and I burned out so bad. I thought I could recover from burnout in like a year. I'm still burnt out. I'm like, why is this lasting so long? The recovery period is different for everybody. I also personally feel like this is a form of self-sacrifice in a way to avoid your problems because if I'm too busy, I don't have to deal with my problems, right? right guilty 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 i thought being busy was gonna fix my problems but it also will help me avoid thinking about them so much as well too because i'm giving a million percent my problems like I, it's nothing else i can do about it so i should feel good about that right but i'm not giving my body any rest i should feel good about, about that right 
exactly we have to take time for self-care rest and resets you have to take care to do that deep clean you gotta take care to do that bubble bath like you need balance your body you add all that stress and things to your body and it really you really pay for it do yourself a favor and start now start now and if those connected to you cannot respect that you're making time for yourself then they don't respect you and they don't respect your boundaries which is a good segue into the last point boundaries i saved this one for last because honestly everything i've talked about is something i've struggled with as a people pleaser but this one right here this right here is my problem lack of boundaries i didn't have boundaries what's a boundary boundary <laughs> not a word sound a word because i keep seeing it <laughs> The definition of like having a lack of boundaries is basically you have weak or undefined personal boundaries allowing others to take advantage of you or manipulate you easily and i know you're probably like hmm, my boundaries are okay well i'll provide you with a couple example questions and let me know if you fall into any of these buckets how many times in the last couple months did you have you told someone that you do not like a certain comment or approach and they have done it anyway they're crossing the boundary, right? What about a friend that knows that it makes you anxious to make plans last minute, but they always want to make plans last minute and they never plan ahead? Or a parent or friend that consistently brings up things to embarrass you or to just bring you down for their own entertainment? Yeah. A boss that talks over you every time you speak or every time you're presenting something, they cut you off, they don't say thank you. I mean, they don't say excuse me. A romantic partner that gets upset when they're in the mood and you're not. A friend that gets upset when you don't have the capacity to listen to them and their problems. Or that didn't even ask if you had the capacity in the first place and still gets upset. And the list can go on. I just wrote down a couple, so I wanted to say those. Those popped out my mind, so. But yeah, it's so many different, you know, things. And I know some of this is subjective. Like some people may not consider that crossing a boundary, but I think it is. If it's in situations where someone is intentionally making you feel uncomfortable or intentionally doing something that they know you don't like and you don't check them, your boundaries, you have a, you, in those cases, you probably have a boundary, but you're not asserting it. So unless you check people, they really don't care. And that also tells about their character, <laughs> so. And honestly, sometimes the boundary doesn't fix the issue. It's truly some people that you just can't be connected to. Some people just don't care about your boundaries anyway. But if you don't have boundaries to even start with, that's a problem and you're failing yourself. Everyone needs boundaries. If you don't have boundaries, how will people know how far to go? They won't. They'll just take it too far every single time. So when I go back to myself, I'm like, yeah, I kind of just let people do whatever. And just been like, oh, they didn't mean it that way. Oh, da da da. Oh, well, it's okay. It's not always okay. Sometimes you need to stand your ground and be like, I don't like that. And if you're going to keep doing that, I can't be associated with you. <sighs> it's hard going back to the confrontation and conflict part, right? <laughs> it's hard. And I wrote this out, so I'm going to read this. I'm working on this whole script thing, but I'm going to read this from my laptop because I want to say it exactly how I typed it, okay? So I spent all this time talking to you about people pleasing and things I realized on my healing journey and how I've been feeling myself. But one piece of this that I really wanna emphasize is that you deserve love. You deserve to take up space. You don't have to minimize yourself to fit in someone else's picture. You have your own portrait and your own life and it can be a beautiful thing too. And you can be connected to people who actually respect you and love you and you don't have to sacrifice yourself for it. You won't put on this earth to solely serve others and neglect yourself. And that's it. That's really the main purpose of the video. I realized I didn't feel like I deserved to take up space or deserve a good life. I felt like I was better suited to benefit someone else's life. And when you really think about it, that's really sad. <laughs> but yeah, and I now know that's not true. That's not true for any of us. Don't let anyone make you feel like that's true. You know? And if they are making you feel like that's true, it's time to self-reflect and decide which com which relationships and which connections are true and genuine ones that are good for you and which ones you should let go. Because once you start believing in you and healing, you'll realize though some of those people you no longer want to be connected to because they don't align with where you're trying to go anyway. That's growth. 
that's groove ain't nothing wrong with you you're growing you're growing i hope this video helps someone that's struggling with this as well as always i love you if you like the video hit the thumbs up and if you like the vibe go ahead and subscribe period in the meantime, I will link some of my other videos if you're interested in what I've been doing or my last couple videos. I will have them linked somewhere on the screen. I will see you guys in the next one and thank you so much for watching till the end.